Today's review, we're going to be having a look at the new DC Collectibles, DC Bombshells, Batman and Catwoman statue. This DC bombshell statue presents a 1940s spin on a comic book romance that has spanned generations. Inspired by the art of internationally renowned designer and illustrator Aunt Lucia and sculpted by Jack Matthews, this statue may look like Catwoman's going in for a kiss, but a closer look at her hands shows her sights set on the Batmobile. The statue measures approximately 11.5 inches tall and is limited to 5,000 pieces. Inspired Inspired by vintage pinup art, the DC Bombshells line features DC superheroes during World War II and launched the DC Comics series of the same name. First thing we'll do is take the tape measure and we'll measure it, figure out how tall the statue stands. Now we're going to take it right to Catwoman's finger, right there, there we go, stop it right there. The measure tron tells us that the, the uh, statue stands 11.9 inches, 11.9 inches in height or in centimeters, switching that over you're looking at 30.2 centimeters in height. When you get a packaging, both Batman and Catwoman are already attached, well, literally and figuratively, they come in one piece. So you have to be careful when you're taking out a packaging. I'll showcase some of the more fragile components of this statue in a second. But you're going to take both figures and you're going to plank them down onto the display base that we've seen with other of the DC Bombshells lineups. Of course, the one other thing that you have to install is this riveted placard featuring Batman and featuring Catwoman on either side with the same similar artwork as what we're going to look at with the statue. The placard is very easy to attach in place. There's just one circular magnet on the back and it attaches like so and it's not going to go anywhere until you want to remove it again. As it's much easier to showcase the statue, I'm going to keep it on its turntable, on this turntable, and we're going to be able to spin it around and have a little close-up look at some of the details on this beautiful piece. As the read-up on the back of the box would indicate, you can sort of see how the statue is playing out here. A very sultry Catwoman is leaning in for a kiss from the Cape Crusader, all the while her real sights are on the keys for the Batmobile, which she's managed to pull and she's currently got in her fingers there. The head sculpts on both Batman and Catwoman are beautiful. This is not the first time we've gotten ourselves a Bombshells Catwoman. In fact, I had a look at that one on this channel as well, if you'd like to go back and have a look at that. It looks like, from what I can remember, it's the same style of outfit that she was wearing in that statue. Of course, now she's leaning in and kissing a Batman. I really like this, this translucency that they've added over the goggle area of his cowl. It's a nice touch, and adding that translucency of yellow, you're able then to still see his eyes inside. I don't know why this is something I like so much. I like the fact that he has no pupils. I would have thought that this being a bombshells lineup, that they would have actually gone for more realism, and therefore they would have shown the eyes of Batman. 
quite the contrary. I'm actually happier that they didn't show the eyes of Batman because I've always liked a non-pupiled Batman, at least non-pupiled in the cowl here. Clearly, you can see, though, that Catwoman is leaning in, but Batman doesn't seem like he's all that receptive towards kissing her. The airbrushing they've done on Catwoman's face is quite nice. They've also even added a little bit of shading around Batman's cheek area and his lips as well. I love the dark shading that they've also added around Batman's cowl, especially around the furrowed brow area. Also kind of dig in these, these little rivet areas that they've got at the side of the cowl there as well. The dark blue is accented rather nicely here with the trimming of the light blue on the sides. Of course, a couple of things to make note of. These are very fragile. You can see that the keys are just sitting on an actual real ring and they're gripping in between her pointer and her thumb. Both the fingers as well as the keys, I could probably, I don't have to, I'm sure, tell you, but I'll tell you anyways, are extremely fragile. One nice little touch is that they've added this uh, little bat logo here just to indicate that those are Batman's keys, then the keys to the Batmobile. I really do like this statue's pose. What I do like about it is that Batman is still composed. He's making no advancements whatsoever towards Catwoman's seductive advances. In fact, she's making all the efforts herself. Batman is just sort of almost just standing there stunned. Not sure whether he should push her away. Not sure whether he should embrace her. It is really a nice a nice pose. What's interesting though is that if you look at the faces and then if you look at the box art that's be at the beginning of this review, the faces here on the physical statue, they're actually closer together than the one that's actually on the back of the box. On the back of the box, there's actually a bit of a bigger distance between Catwoman's face and Batman's face. I wonder if at last minute, DC Collectibles opted to bring the faces even closer together, making it even more of a seductive pose between the two here. When it comes to the bombshells designs, I've been bigger fans of the female characters than I have been the male characters. I really haven't been all that impressed with the designs that they've opted for when it comes to male characters until now. I really like the look of Batman. Looking at it, it sort of reminds me of Gotham by Gaslight Batman, although it's a slight variation to that costume. Some of the same elements carry over from Batman's traditional costume, of course the gray here. I like that they've got these buttons running down the sides of his torso and then of course the more traditional bat emblem there. They're favoring giving him purple gloves, which is a nice hark throwback to the original Batman costume design. And I love the way that the cape flows around the front areas of his shoulders. I'm not sure if you can actually see it, but it's got this little clasp connecting the front, almost the collared section of his cape here. Here's a closer look at the clasp that's connecting the Batman's collar together. It also gives me a good opportunity to showcase the other very fragile piece. It's these pearled necklaces that are around Catwoman. It looks like they're actually attached, but if you look at them, if I just tilt them just very carefully up, you can see that there's nothing really connecting them. So this is something you're going to have to be very careful of if you happen to pick this one up for yourself. Very careful that you are taking this out of the tray, that you don't accidentally clip this, and you don't accidentally clip the keys, which I think of the two things are probably the most fragile on this statue. The statue's got some amazing colors here. They've airbrushed what looks to be slightly darker shades of gray among the otherwise lighter shades of gray for his costume. The cape, I think, gets the most color treatment. You can see just the very edges here are in lighter blue. And then the majority of the cape, the more recessed areas of the cape, of course, are in a darker shade there. Batman's boots get some nice panel lining here in the light blue. You can see right around the side, if I spin it around, there is what looks to be a bat emblem right there. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a finished bat emblem. If we spin it around to the other side, you can kind of sort of see that it's more... The interior is a gold emblem, the bat logo, and then they sort of outline around it in the darker shade. I guess on this side, it's a little bit harder to make out. They probably have just missed it a little bit by trying to outline it. So it's certainly a lot cleaner, a lot more cleaner on this side. Speaking of panel lining, you can see that there's some nice lighter shades of purple in Catwoman's otherwise dark purple dress. The lining, the purple lining, runs around the outer trim, runs up the side, and actually, even if you look at it, uh, her gloves, and I just spin it around here, the gloves have a single strip of that lighter purple that run their way all the way up, 
And actually, it's even present around her fingers as well. Batman gets a bit of a vintage looking utility belt here. You can see the bat emblem is featured on the front and the coloring is a nice shade of almost a mustard yellow, kind of a caramel yellow, and they've trimmed it out in the lighter shade. A few little hook ringlets here. I'm not quite sure what this is supposed to be, whether it's actually a whip or if it's supposed to be like a grapple line. It's got a couple of pockets there featured on the side, some nice bold black striping running down the middle sections here. Here's a closer look at Catwoman's face. Much kind of like Batman gets the translucent yellow goggles, Catwoman in favor gets more ruby translucent shades. You can still see that you can kind of make out her eyes. It's a little bit more distorted here. You can better see it when you tilt the statue to the side. Again, I really do like the coloring. I like also that they've given her almost a makeshift Catwoman headdress. I guess it could be something like a hat or a headband, but they've peeked off the ends here. They've peeked these little tips off to make it actually look like she's wearing Catwoman ears. To my knowledge, DC Collectibles hasn't released any of the DC bombshell statues here in black and white. I think if anyone was a contender for a black and white treatment, it would really be this one right here. I think they could make use of the lighter shades. In fact, actually the gray, I think, on Batman's outfit could probably be kept the same. And all the dark areas, like the blue, for example, could be done in a dark gray or black. I think the pose is that good. It's one of my personal favorites. I'm not overly crazy, in all honesty, when it comes to the male hero characters. Usually I'm more favoring the female bombshell designs. But Batman here works really well. And couple that with a really neat design of Catwoman, you've really got a statue that looks fantastic to look at. Now, I've had a look at the Bombshells statues and figures already on this channel. Regular and loyal viewers of this channel, thank you for that, by the way, will probably know I'm a big fan of the 40s design. There's something about the 40s Bombshells designs that I think work well for the DC heroes and villains. Although I've always feel like it worked better for the female than I thought it did for the males. I don't have many examples to really go by. There was, for example, a Bombshells Aquaman, which I really never picked up because I wasn't crazy about the design. Now we fast forward ahead of time and we have a look at the, both the Batman and the Catwoman. Catwoman is sort of the second go around that we've seen a statue design like this. There was the one that came with the chair, which we also had a look at on this channel, but now we're pairing it with the Cape Crusader. And boy, oh boy, is this a successful looking statue. I love the, the fact that at the very end, Batman is still holding back. He's not sure whether he should lean forward or whether he should push Catwoman away. He's sort of just standing there stunned. Seductive Catwoman in the meantime is leaning over for a kiss, but we really know the real reason. She's trying to take the keys for the Batmobile. But boy, oh boy, is this ever a successful looking statue. I love the design of Bombshell's Batman. That sounds strange even just to say that. I would certainly love to see a Bombshell's treatment of Batman. Could you imagine even Bombshell, Batman, and the Rogues featured in like a comic series run? I probably wouldn't call it Bombshell's Batman, though. That, that sounds kind of wrong. Loving the design of Batman, loving the design of Catwoman, and pairing the two together the way that they have is a very successful... How cool is this statue? Uh, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, fans of both... Catwoman and Batman. I would say I would I would highly recommend picking this one up if you're a fan of both. It's a really neat looking statue and it's currently available in comic book stores should you wish to pick this one up for yourself. To be fair, it's also the holiday season, so if, you know, if you have relatives or somebody's asking you, "Hey, what would you like for Christmas?" I would probably suggest maybe this one if you're like I said a big fan of Batman and Catwoman. This really is the best of both worlds and it's a really neat looking statue to put on display. Either way, today we were having a look at the DC Collectibles, DC Bombshells. This was the Batman and Catwoman Bombshells Batman. I never thought I'd ever say, see the day when I would say Bombshells Batman. I wonder what they would do with like a Bombshells Joker. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay, either way, if you guys haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, what exactly are you waiting for? We're going to have a look at some other DC Collectibles goodies in the coming days because, of course, it is the holiday season. If you're trying to think of great gift ideas for friends, family, or even yourself, sometimes we do buy gifts for ourselves during the holiday season. Uh, certainly, there's going to be a lot coming to this channel in the coming weeks, so stay tuned for those. As always, guys, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.